à droite. Hello, gentle patrons. Thank you for being here. As always, we cannot make Art Slice without your support. And we wanted to do something a little extra special, a little special special, special special yeah. for you all to send, uh, to say Bon Voyage to 2022, a mixed year at best. Good fucking bye. And <laughs> hope that 2023 is better. It's probably not going to be spoiler alerts. Who knows? Cross your fingers. Probably going to get worse. Probably going to get a little worse. Uh, yeah. So we are here with our very first video episode. Yes. Yeah. As Welcome. you can see, you can see our faces for the first time, maybe. <laughs> and we are covering the great surrealist paint off, also known as the Bellamy International Art Competition. Mostly known as the Bellamy. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Which we discovered while researching uh, for Dorothea Tanning. Right. I like our title better. You like our personally. title a little bit better. Okay. Um, Because there will be judging involved. We will be doing some judging Stephanie, set the stage for us here. What are we feeling? Mm. What are we seeing? What are we tasting? All right. First of all, we are squinting because of the sunshine. We are tasting the musk of lots of sweaty men in woolen three piece suits. <laughs> oh, God. No, no. Because, no. <laughs> be- yes, yes, because we are in Hollywood. It's the mid 1940s and the now figurehead of surrealism, much to the chagrin of André Breton, is Salvador Dali. I don't want a fascist in my club. Boo hoo, boo hoo. Breton, <laughs> like Breton's in America now. Like he has to deal with fascism and, and people who are, you know, playing footsie with fascists. Get over it, Breton. Yeah, we have freedom the, of speech here. Yeah, okay? we, got, we got some freedom of speech we, and we have a lot of trolls. <laughs> we have a lot of footsie fascist trolls. It's great. We love it here. You'll like it, leave. I, I wish I could. Anyway, <laughs> I wish they'd let me. They make it so hard to leave. Um, okay, so right. I wish Dal- it was that easy. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Dali is having his Hollywood moment. Okay, he did have one, in case you were wondering. Mm. Um, and he's working with Alfred Hitchcock for a layout and the design of a pivotal dream <laughs> sequence in the movie Spellbound. That does sound great, Stephanie. You did say Alfred Hitchhawk, which sounds a lot like Hamhawk. So Hitchhawk? Hitchhawk. Is that what I said? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm just uncomfortable <laughs> saying cock. Okay? It's okay. It's okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, especially when, when you're on camera. Hitchhawk. Oh, oh, uh, oh my God. <laughs> listeners, we're going to be a little weird because usually like, we, are, we are very aware there are cameras on us and I don't like... It's strange. We'll get used to it. I promise. I promise. That's why this is a Patreon episode. Sorry, patrons. You're a little test subjects. Also, does you want to see this behind the scenes awkwardness? <laughs> a lot of this gets cut. So the sequence is nice, but it, it's too jarringly dolly. It's it's like when yeah. they put like like product placements in in films, you know, where the Pepsi logo is perfectly centered in in Mac and Me. <laughs> <laughs> the dance sequence is at McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, Dolly, um, he was even talking to Walt Disney and other fascists about what would become, uh, I think it's called Destino, a short animation that Disney initially decided not to release. Uh, but I think it was like 20-ish years ago, they they ended up uh, releasing it. They ended up finishing it and releasing it. It's very Dolly. Very Dolly. Mm. And Disney. Yeah. No? Both? More, more, more Dolly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And kind of anime now that they've redone it 20 years ago to kind of keep up with the kids. I'm very interested to see what that looks like. The kids love their animes. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> as World War II is wrapping up, Dragon Ball Z's, people's eyes have once again been open to the horror and suffering caused by war. Um, and surrealism is now on the verge of becoming mainstream. Mm-hmm. Gross. Uh, just kidding. Uh, so generally films like Hitchcock's, uh, they <laughs> confront difficult subject matter and they become more and more commonplace. One such film was Albert Lewin's 1945's adaptation of Oscar Wilde's novel Picture of Dorian Gray, which many of you have probably heard of, but if not, just know that it has a painting that is central to the entire story. Yeah, it was a talkie uh, that was originally <laughs> in black and white, except for the infamous painting. Uh, when it appeared on camera, they spliced in some Technicolor, 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 te- 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 Technicolor, Technicolor, okay. Um, <laughs> so that the most famous grotesque painting in the film could jar people in the audience and, you know, make them eat popcorn or snuggle up to their date or whatever. Right. So the movie was a hit. 
And to this day, it still has a positive rating on Rotten Tomatoes and INDB. And the director, Albert Lewin, thought, hey, people love that. So why mess with the recipe? Mm. So he's like, I'm going to do the exact same thing for my next movie. But this time, I'm going to choose a much lesser known book. Mm. (laughs) And instead of just commissioning a painting from an indie artist that was recommended to me, maybe, uh, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to hold a whole ass competition. And the artist winner will be featured in the film in glorious Technicolor. 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 And maybe I'll make their career. We'll see. Who knows? I have that power, he said. (laughs) in my mind. <laughs> so the movie would be named The Private Affairs of Bellamy, mm. a sexier title for the 1885 novel Bellamy by Guy de Ma- Ma- Maupassant. D- Guy Muffin Pants. Got, got <laughs> Guy of Muffin Pants. <laughs> you can make muffins with Guy, right? Unrelated. Feeling bready. Okay, so... <laughs> All right, so of course there is a sexier movie poster as part of the promo Mm -hmm. stating the history of the scoundrel with a young woman, a young Angela Lansbury, actually. What? Clinging on to the pinstripe pants of the main character. Murder she wrote? Angela Lansbury? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Very young. All right. And she's Oh, I see it. Pinstripe clinging is what's (laughs) happening, and her bare shoulder is exposed. Spoiler alert, we, like we tried to watch this. Huh. It, it, we tried to watch it on YouTube. It is a snoozer. Yeah. The movie did not recapture that picture of Dorian Gray magic. It, it, I don't think it was just our 21st century ADHD. Okay, it was <laughs> just like th- this was not liked at the time of its release either. Right. Right. Inside. So this this movie's doomed. Okay, but no one knows this yet. Ovs, we have the gift of hindsight. Uh, and the artists that will participate in said competition also don't know yet. They could also definitely use this money. Okay. So back to the competition. It would aptly be named the Bellamy International Art Competition. Okay. And you couldn't just sign up if you were wondering. You could. There was no list. Okay. You had to be specially invited. Mm. And 12 artists were, okay. including the artist that was in the original picture of Dorian Gray okay. movie. You painted the picture of Dorian Gray. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, which is kind of a slap in the face yeah. to him. Um it's more it's more fun to make the starving artist dance for the Benjamins, I guess. Okay. Um but anyway, since surrealists were all the rage, most of the artists invited were in fact surrealists. Yeah, and you think the original painter starts seeing the uh the, the list, <laughs> the roster of artists that are going to be on it and he's like, "I'm not I don't know how I fit in with this." I'm True. not a surrealist. Like, what's going on here? True. But also, <laughs> each artist would get $500 for participating okay. and an additional 2500 if they were the winner. And I looked this up, listeners. Don't worry. Of course. $500 in today's money is $8,000. Fuck! And $49,000 <laughs> for winning the oh competition. Oh, my God! Which is like a year's salary for mo- which is way more than a year's salary for a lot of people. But yeah. For- that's still that's still pretty good. And money, I think, bought more back then because houses were like 200 bucks. Yeah. These yeah. artists these artists wanted to compete in this. They were happy sure. to compete. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Slap together a painting real quick. Call right. it a day. Right. Um, but the artists would be given a very specific assignment and they would be judged on aesthetic quality mm. along with how they interpreted the assignment. And, of course, there would be a panel of judges to ultimately decide the winning artist. On to our first contestant, Ivan Albright. Albright is a returning champion of sorts. He was the man behind the titular picture for the director's name, who I forgot, picture of Dorian Gray. (laughs) Ivan is not considered a surrealist. He didn't hang out in those surrealist circles like Remedios Varro. He is considered a magical realist. Mm. The big defining difference between the two being that surrealism will introduce the weirdness through certain sublimity or randomness mm-hmm. without a meaning tethered to it necessarily. Whereas magical realism may be just as weird, but within that magical reality, there is an explanation for that weirdness. Love it. Ivan was a prominent name in American art circles from the 30s to 40s, but like most representational artists, he was kind of forgotten about amidst the uh, abstraction craze of the 1950s. We, I guess we were not familiar with Albright's work at all, but Mm -hmm. definitely, definitely very happy to be introduced to him. Ivan's father was actually a commercially successful artist, and Ivan really pushed against that, as you can see. 
people are not going to be lining up to get family portraits from Ivan. These are densely nope. painted mm-hmm. portraits of people in what can only be described as slow and painful, gradual declines into the grave. <laughs> <laughs> like dying of petty excesses too, like not something tragic. It's all self-inflicted. Ugh. Like like decades of uh, breakfast, gin fizzies, uh, and, and quaaludes, okay? <laughs> Which is why this lady looks exactly like Boris Johnson. <laughs> uh, just some serious, unflattering I mean, shadows. God damn. I, I've never seen this person's work, obviously. I'm in love. I love the low contrast. <laughs> I love the unflattering shadows. I love the darkness. I love the thick, disgusting paint. I, I love it. I love it. I don't know how he escaped uh, being mentioned in the art history canon. I really don't. These portraits are incredible. Uh, yeah, the the little trombolé looking still life yeah. though. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I, it's like a, a dark Lucian Freud or something. He's amazing. Yes, and might I throw in psychedelic. A little bit psychedelic, at too. At times. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Contestant number three. <laughs> We have our favorite old classic, Leonora Carrington, Mm. okay, hyena queen. Mm. At this time, she is well settled in Mexico, and this is the same year that she would go on to make The House Opposite, which we covered in episodes five and seven. Which, if I'm not mistaken, this is an interesting time for Elsie. Mm -hmm. The House Opposite was kind of one of those early paintings where you can see she is gradually changing her style a bit looking a little bit less indebted to the Paris Surrealists and maybe more influenced by, honestly, artists like Giotto, um, things are breathing more. Mm-hmm. There are more competing paint movements like translucency versus opacity, more experimentation with mixed mediums, and she is really coming into something that is more her own. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And this is the start of my favorite time period of Elsie's work Same. as well. Uh, we will have to see if her painting lives up to that description, though. Ooh. Ooh. Little, little teaser. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Contestant number siete. We have, would have had, Leonor Fini. <laughs> okay, Leonor Fini who makes these beautiful but unnerving dollhouse-looking surrealist works um, with women in these positions of power. Dommy. I'm not going to say almost. Definitely Dommy. Uh, (laughs) She buckled against the surrealist idea of the femme en font. And and made them pay for it with with her her dominess. There's (laughs) there's also a ton of space in her work, which adds to that creepy vib, right? Mm -hmm. That beautiful color. I, I just love Lenore Fini's work so much. She's mm-hmm. definitely a very strong contestant, and I can see her walking away with this prize very easily, Stephanie. None right. of this matters because she turned it down. She was too good for she it. She said no. She yeah. walked away. Right. Walked away. She's I don't like, need the money. I have too many cats. I have too many lovers. You got too many lovers. I have a life. <laughs> okay. They make the money for me. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm a financial dom. Also, I don't want to paint the saint I've never heard of. Right. I want to paint a male saint. Gross. Just kidding. Don't know about any of that. All I know, all we know, we're speculating. She walked away. She said, no, thank you. Mm. No, gracias. Picture picture the uh, SpongeBob conch <laughs> toy with the... Po- no, okay. <laughs> Contestant number 11. Mm. We have Stanley Spencer. Again, not a surrealist. Um, he is another artist who needs his own full episode to yeah. unpack He's, yeah. his... History and his work. He's a very, very talented painter. Uh, Stanley's probably most well known for his Sanda Memorial Chapel paintings or his shipbuilding on the Clyde murals. Very Diego esque mm-hmm. in his level of detail and kind of multitude of figures interacting with one another. Yeah. He was also incredibly religious, sort of. His, <laughs> <laughs> his series of Jesus listeners. His series of Jesus. G- okay. We don't. We do not have time for it. Maybe we'll be able to work it into like into a. We'll be able to work it into a second slice one sure. day. One day. So he was religious, but also very horny. Okay, so he <laughs> painted a lot of naked folks, and he left his wife for a woman who he was enamored with and who he wanted to paint in the nude, which he did. He went on to do that, but he also it was it was a weird situation where she seems totally not jazzed, and so he injects his own nude self portrait into the composition, but it's kind of like in a different space, like it's kind of collaged it's into it. Really awkward. Um, very disjointed the whole problem there was that she was not into men she liked ladies and they never actually lived together they just kind of you know yeah that's all that was it it. it yeah she wasn't into she wasn't into it so so these paintings are maybe more surreal than what stanley (laughs) was aware of 
<laughs> yeah, not by choice. Uh, yeah. Talented painter, though. Contestant number 12. And finally, we have Dorothea Tanny. Yeah. Who we just lost two months of our lives to yeah. and who we covered for a full ass episode and a half. So there is not really much else we can say about her. Go listen to those. Please. Go listen to the second slice. Please. Go listen to the full episode. Go. Yeah. There's a lot on her from us specifically. If you need an intro. Yeah. There you go. At bold three detergent plus. Next, we have <laughs> St. Anthony Tormented by Demons by Martin <laughs> Sean Gower. It is oh an engraving God. from 1470 to 74. Okay. There is no distinguishing halo, okay, which is interesting, but we do have a tear or an anime sweat bead mm. and a resigned expression as a mob of demons attacks him with their bare claws or with sticks. So Shongar depicted these imagined creatures with like such amazing detail and partially it's because of the engraving. This is a print. So he was able to get that crazy amount of detail, which makes the monsters super realistic. Like he's on point with the textures mm -hmm. of the demons and their anatomy and that righteous butthole. It is in flames, <laughs> which St. Anthony apparently is the patron saint of kin skin conditions. Oh, I don't, I just passed the skin condition. <laughs> That's part of your skin. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, At least the exterior. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're coming after him. Like, Heal hey, me. I need help. Heal hey. me. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. That was my demon voice. <laughs> All right. So that being said, this kind of shit, this freaky detail, yeah. um, plus his talent, obviously, Martin Schongauer, artist, is very talented. And this made for some fantastical fucking work, um, which made him one of the most influential artists in printmaking mm. ever. So not only did he inspire fellow German printmaker, Albert Dürer, a.k.a. German Jesus, mm. uh, but he also inspired a certain young Italian artist 700 miles away. Okay. Which brings us to our next St. Anthony depiction. We have the same painting. Oh, go on. <laughs> uh, so we have the Torment of Saint Anthony by okay. Michelangelo Buonarroti. Let's get some fan art. So, <laughs> yeah, actually, okay. uh, circa fourteen eighty seven, fourteen eighty eight. Oil and temper on panel. Little Michelangelo was inspired by Old Martin. Okay, you can say that Michelangelo brought Technicolor to Martin's original vision. Mm. Okay, and. <laughs> I, yeah, so I suddenly see that righteous butthole now. It's in color. And I notice that there are eyes and whiskers. It is less detailed, though, which I do appreciate. <laughs> uh, I got it. Okay, I'm not even going to get don't into look it. it. Okay. Don't look at it. I um, can't look away from it now. Especially <laughs> no. now it's in color. It has eyes. It has eyes. <laughs> he brought Technicolor to the vision, uh, but he also brought out, or he added some new things. So he added a landscape at the bottom, which mm -hmm. is the Arno River Valley, which is where Florence is located. He also added fish scales to one of the demons, the one on the top left. There's a story out there saying that he went down to the fish market to uh, to study um, said fish scales for the painting. So this is actually the earliest known painting by Michelangelo. Oh, so wow. He was about 20, 20. <laughs> He was about 12 or 13 years old. And it goes without saying that the technical skill and imagination is, I mean, it's mind boggling. Yeah. I guess your kid could have painted this if you only have that to do. If you are only learning how to paint pretty. If that's, that's all you're doing impressive. all day. Yes. Yeah. Your kid could do that. Maybe. This is also only one of four surviving paintings because, you know, he became a sculptor and all that. <laughs> uh, later in life, he actually shit talked oil painting. It's really funny. Yeah. Michelangelo. He's like, it's a bit fussy. Yeah. I don't know. That's it is a little bit said. fussy. Yeah. <laughs> fussier than marble. Way fussier than marble. Yeah. Yeah. Less physical, but more, yeah, more, more fussy for sure. No, that was me being sarcastic. Oh. Yeah. I would I would think marble would be so much more fussy. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I haven't done that, so I can't speak to that. But anyway, I have a little quick side by side mm. here. Um, really impressive. I prefer the prints. The I'm print? Yeah. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Sorry, Michelangelo. I prefer my buttholes you don't win in black this and white. One. Uh, uh, listeners, on to the competition. Le competition. We, we are your judges on, on the great semi surrealist bake off, paint off. What are we? Paint a paint off. A, a paint off. A paint off. <laughs> I don't know like that. Who's doing the English accents now? Uh, it's Stephanie. That's right. Me. I can't take all the heat. No. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Come on. What are we waiting for? 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Why did you make what? me that guy? <laughs> what guy? Uh, I'm all of them except wait, for. We... <laughs> yeah. I thought. The... <laughs> you thought you were what's his face? I thought name. it was an amalgamation of both of us. No. Nope. Um. <laughs> You're just you're just prude or whatever her name is Peru Peru. I love this. Yeah. I love this so much. Um, cool. How do you like this more than the rock lobster? Well, anyway, anyway, anyway. What? So much time on the rock lobster video, and you you're just like you giggled slightly at it. Um, and this you're laughing big rock time. Rock lobster did not have you in a shag right. wig. Okay. <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay, listeners, we're going to get into these works. We're going to rank and judge them as we go using a tier maker, which, you know, made us log into our defunct Twitter account. Not too happy about that. Guess guess they're not on the, the Mastodon train no. yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're too cool. We're <laughs> ahead of the curve. We're so cool with our four followers. Actually, I don't think we have any followers. You can jump <laughs> on this as well. We will provide a link and judge yourself. We would love to see it. And you do not need to log on to Twitter to do that mm-hmm. and share with us your rankings. Okay. Cause we want to see who you would choose yes. as the winner. We, we want, want to, to know. see that. Yeah. We yeah. care about your opinion. Yeah. All right. First up, Ivan Albright. We have a work here with the aptly titled The Temptation of St. Anthony, mm. Oil on Canvas, and I'm like 99% sure all of the paintings we're discussing today uh, at the, from this point forward are named The Temptation of St. Anthony. Checks out. Um, and they were all painted from 1945 to 1947. Okay. Um, okay, so back to this work. Mm, don't know where to start. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Throw, um, throw like a uh, something at it. <laughs> start there. <laughs> I'm... Immediately, I'm getting like wrestling match with some okay. pizza thrown in, some che- a cheesy, all the toppings, all a right. cheesy wrestling yeah. match. Yes, oh, magma, uh, cheese, nipple tassels. <laughs> there's like uh, so, some geckos in here. Yeah, there's some barking chihuahuas. Some bar- <laughs> um, uh, there's like uh, what are those things you grab onto at the at the bouldering gyms? Oh my God. The colorful bouldering gyms. The the ro- the I don't the know fake rocks, the, the I don't plastic. Know. It's like no 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 nothing you climb in life has those. <laughs> they're right. like training wheels yeah uh, i feel like exactly um but you know what i said cheese and these the figures are purple the hallucinations the the sexy females are i mean you know what i mean <laughs> they're purple uh so purple and cheese reminds me of chuck e cheese okay so this to me is like a nightmare version of chuck e cheese <laughs> Where the robots are attacking you. Yeah, They've all grown that. insane muscles and they are going to attack you. So it does look like, you know, the middle of a ride at like Disney World and like the animatronics. Yeah, come I'm after getting you. like yeah. cave, like r- cave vibes. You're in the, you know? the, ma- the magma river. The magma river. There's an old and prospector. The... I'm not going to do it. Okay. 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 It's very, <laughs> very hack. Uh, so yeah, insane demons are coming, are pouring in, right? The, right? the chihuahua form, gecko form. Mm. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot's going on. Yeah, you never know. They could be, you know, demons are they're in all sorts of things. Geckos, they, chihuahuas. They possess all sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. Uh, rock walls. <laughs> rock walls. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, all right. Orange magma pouring in. Mm-hmm. The two lustful, I guess Stephanie thinks they're attractive blue women are are shredding St. Anthony's burlap robe, <laughs> trying trying to rip him in half as well, it seems like. Okay, they're fighting over him. It's too sexy because he goes to this gym, I guess. He's pretty cut. Uh, once again, uh, Albright here, he's playing with low contrast compositions, mm-hmm. which I fucking love. Mm-hmm. Not as low contrast as his other works because there is that magma pop of orange that mm-hmm. kind of brightens everything up. Love it. Br- brightens it up for a second. Uh, <laughs> but they still kind of sit at the same value, even despite mm-hmm. some areas being a little bit more colorful, mm-hmm. okay? Every nook and cranny of this composition is just, like we said, is filled with something. Yes. And then that uh, that color plays into that flattened perspective. Mm-hmm. So basically, all of the things in this painting, the value, the low contrast, the horror, vacuey compositions, <laughs> create this just insane claustrophobia. Yeah. I could keep looking for ages. Um, there's like a lot of other shit that I can't quite make out if I just right. glance at it. And I'm okay with that. I don't think I need to know <laughs> what's in every like nook and cranny because this is like a dark. Okay. This is like a dark version of Lisa Frank, like dark Lisa yeah. Frank. Like it's, it's meant yeah, to be yeah, yeah, yeah. overwhelming. 
Yeah. So this is a more grotesque version of all that, mm-hmm. definitely. And I think a part of that, too, is the thick paint. You can tell this is like laid on there, laid on mm-hmm. thick. And just this packed composition actually reminds me of Lucian Freud Mm -hmm. a little bit or Michelangelo's lumpy muscular figures. Okay. Right. Because they're all shredded. So let's let's place it. Let's place it on the tear maker. Okay. (laughs) Okay. First of all, though, we asked you all for some instant feedback from these works on Instagram. So I remember like I didn't ask you all if I could share your handles. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I will read some of the answers that we got. Stephanie, if you want to help me out here. Yeah. Um, this, <laughs> so one answer was, this one is giving me a headache. Oh, well, <laughs> and totally agree. Feel that. We definitely we got three overwhelmings. Yep. <laughs> accurate, accurate. Uh, a certain answer said, definitely a maximalist. Yes. <laughs> LOL, another LOL. LOL. Uh-huh. Uh, and then my favorite yeah. is primordial Bosch Magic Eye. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, that's probably the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Where are you going to place this? We want to place this on our tier, on our tier of Le Champions uh, finalists. Mm-hmm. I guess we we can't crown the victor yet. Right. Moral victory. Just needed that five hundred dollars, baby. <laughs> or soggy overcooked pasta. Okay, those are our tiers. Where uh, is this one going? For you. It's early, but I'm feeling confident. I think it should go at the top. You're already giving it the championship. No, just like. So the finalists. The finalists, okay, okay. yes, absolutely. Finalists. It's early, but I'm feeling I'm feeling confident. <laughs> I feel confident. I okay. am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't yeah, I don't think I can place this one yet either. Okay. But right now, I would also, I think, be tempted to crown Ivan the champion. No, okay. I didn't say that. No, I I'm saying say I, this is what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. I was okay. Like, I'm not you're like agreeing with me. I'm like, no, I didn't say I was gonna crown him. I just said he should be up there. <laughs> okay. But also, if I'm thinking like practically, if I'm really thinking about this practically, this mm-hmm. is a black and white film with a little bit of Technicolor. I think mm-hmm. just the just the painting shows up in Technicolor. So this one would be a very difficult one for those Technicolor artists. Yeah. And it wouldn't show up very well in a black and white movie. That's true. Except for those orange pops. I don't oh, know. Especially, the it's low pretty contrast. Small. It's pretty small in the um, film. Okay. That's true. It's pretty small. It doesn't take up much space. A lot of people would be walking out. Yeah. Quitting. Well, they wouldn't even really be able to see it. So... <laughs> There's a lot of issues there. I could see maybe if I'm thinking practically, is this going to go into a black and white movie? It may not be the best option, but okay. As far as just straight up painting, yeah, I love it. I like that. Okay, we, we're doing straight up painting because I'm gonna we're put not, it in the finalist. We're not making a movie, All right. so that that too. All right. All righty. On to the artist. I'm sure we will all love the piece. We will all love Salvador Dali. That's right. Okay. So now we have Dolly's version of The Temptation of St. Anthony, and this is actually probably one of the most well-known Dolly paintings. Uh, you all know this painting, I'm sure. It's mm-hmm. the painting with the animal parade of horses mm-hmm. and elephants with spindly little spider mm-hmm. legs kind of carrying all sorts of heavy objects on the, of, of gold on their backs, you know, like a golden naked lady mm-hmm. uh, on a cup of lust, I guess. A golden Venetian-like building. <laughs> Yep. A golden obelisk. Yep. So we're calling back to our Maria Raji second slice, um, mm. which was actually that I'm tower. I'm surprised you remember that one, stuff. You're pretty drunk during that episode. You know what? Shh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that tower was actually inspired. Dali was inspired by Bernini's obelisk, which was outside of the temple where that Maria Raji piece was okay. in Rome. Okay. So there is an obelisk in that square, which was pilfered. Obs, it's in mm. Rome. It's um, Egyptian, yeah. It's Egyptian, yes. Uh, so Bernini built the base to that, and mm. it's an elephant. Yeah. Imagine like a candle holder. Bernini made mm. a, a, a rad colonial candle holder. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. All right. And then, okay, so moving on to St. Anthony, he is depicted here totally nude. Totes nude. Looks like he stumbled out of, like, the desert after being left for dead at at Burning Man. And he's just kind of (laughs) holding up a DIY cross, you know? Like, he's totally nude, and he's hastily tied together two sticks to make a cross. Where did he get the thread? I don't know. Uh, (laughs) Oh, don't ask questions. And in uh, typical Dali fascist, 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 fashion, fashion, fascist. Fashion. Okay. Fascist. A skull, a skull is positioned on the ground looking right at his phallus. Of course. Of course. Of course. Come on, okay? Dolly. Come on. <laughs> Come on. No. It so let's is, rank it. Yeah, let's yeah. rank it. All right, please. Thank you. All right. Dolly, he's just too much for me. I don't know. I don't like the guy. I'm sorry. I don't want to, dude, I don't want to step on your grave on my way to look at your Alice Cooper hologram. Okay. 
I want to eat tapas like a normal person in the sun and enjoy my life. It's, okay, Dolly. He's overdone. Right. He's this overdone. Is, this is soggy pasta. It's it's the definition of I guess we're ranking. It's the definition of soggy pasta. Yes, yes. Sorry, y'all. Um, Not sorry. So we don't get thrown under the bus entirely. No, we're gonna and throw y'all. Yeah, we're gonna throw our listeners under the bus. Hate that I can separate artists from art. Very funny. Love that. <laughs> Quote, like I feel stoned just looking at it, and it gives me that paranoia feeling before the trip. <laughs> Star emoji, quote, end quote, whatever. <laughs> Corky? Like Corky. Uh, Corky. Corky's good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what book of the Bible is this from? A little uh, investigative space. Um, it's not, listener. It's not, it is not sure. in the Bible. It could be. It's a lot of books that didn't make it into the Bible that could have been a part of the Bible. Or that were and then were taken right. out. Maybe Dolly in the Holy Mountain is, is, a, is a book of the Bible. <laughs> All right, one last one. Religion, occult, human fear, patriarchal world dominance, period. Scary shit. Very scary. That is some scary shit. All right, yeah. Okay, one more thing. We have another opinion. Okay. Real quick. So, remember Dorothea Tanning? I do, yes. She took up three months of our lives or two Uh, months, I can't remember. A lot. I lost track. So, she actually had something to say about Dolly um, in an interview (laughs) in the early 2000s. I remember this, yeah. Quote, Dali used his silly shenanigans to get publicity, mm-hmm. to which he was extravagantly addicted. Yes. He made some sublime paintings. He was a master painter, and his exhibitionist tricks didn't enhance him as a person mm. or as an artist. It was a pity, really. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, I mean, he's very talented. He's a very talented painter. Yeah. Technique, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What, what could have been? What could have been, Dali? But what is not? What was not, but what could have been. Sorry if y'all like Dolly. Uh, we are open to hearing why you like Dolly. Yes. For sure. But for now, he's soggy pasta. I'm moving on. Next up, we have OLG, a.k.a. Osvaldo Luis Guglielmi. <laughs> so unlike Berman, Eugene Berman, um, OLG's contribution has not been totally lost, uh, but we... It's been partially lost. Yeah, so all we have, all we were able to find is this black and white, low-res reproduction. Unless the painting was in black and white, which maybe he just wanted to mess with the Technicolor artist for some reason. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, that's true. But we can't tell too much from this. Right. Like, we can, we can see, um, but the quality is just not great. It, it, the black and white kind of lends a Twilight Zone-ness to it. Mm. Uh, probably not intentional, but color Twilight Zone is very Daddy to Kiriko, if you think about it, so that <laughs> all checks out. True. Very Cubist. Also kind of medieval here, so he's blending some styles together. I think it would be a good painting if we could see it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm definitely intrigued. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about it a little bit. So we have this weird, almost cartoonish woman mm-hmm. um, on the right side. Whose body has been remixed. I don't know how else to describe it. (laughs) Uh, So it's like elongated and it's like stretched in all of the wrong places (laughs) or right places, depending on, you know, where you like your buttocks to be located. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Not good judge. Um, And she has like. Depending on what your cup of lust is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Proud of myself, guys. Okay. All right. So (laughs) Uh, she also has like a little Matisse flower hand. Uh, glove, which is gloved, <laughs> like her arms are, her hands are gloved, um, fancy. Yeah. So she's standing in front of a table of food. Mm-hmm. So she is part of the hallucination, right? Like sexy okay. lady next to a, a feast. Feast. Yes. Um. So there's also though, this is the best part. There's a hole in her stomach. Right. Right. <laughs> so you can um, see the food. Yeah. Right. So he can get lusty and hunky. Well, little George Costanza. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Action. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, okay. <laughs> Behind her is this very cube, this very flattened, like, stacked city, like I mentioned, with your with your daddy to Kiriko motifs in there, like a man on a horse statue, the archways, the empty buildings. She's also very mannequin-esque, like, a bro- I guess, a broken mannequin, a mannequin that was plastic yeah. and maybe was next to the heat too long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, like that. Yeah, like exactly that. like that. Okay. I'm sure all of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you <laughs> know, you Anthony, know. He's looking lean and mean, okay? But also yeah. in anguish, right? Like Kind of like LC's paintings, we have three faces, we have four faces, yeah. we probably have five faces, yeah. or that could be a rock. Could be more faces back there, I'm not sure. So overall, composition is very interesting, okay? Mm-hmm. If we had a better reproduction, if it was in color, I think we would be spending more time with this one. Yeah. But... Probably gonna be eliminated right here, right now. What do you say? Yep. Okay. 
So some listener answers we have lust question mark unobtainable question mark we have feelings of disconnected wait, how do you wait wait disconnection disconnect okay. <laughs> sometimes words look weird they look weird uh, they do detachment from self I do I like that one sorry uh-huh. Jeebus and his out of body experiences <laughs> love that dreamlike uh-huh. and Calvin Klein obsession. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This, this is a Calvin <laughs> Klein ad for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Is it because it's black and white? I love that. Uh, yeah. And he's, you know, kind of an emaciated but slim, tall man. So very, very fashion. Very Calvin Klein. To be humble. All right. So we're going with moral victory. All right. Because I assume he took his time with this one and it was a good painting. Um, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Okay. But you're going to stick with Max. No. No? Oh, okay. Le Beige is calling you're my name. Be- you're going with the beiges. I'm, the beige ladies. I'm leaning towards okay. Stanley. Oh, shit. I mean, there are huh. just, there are so many hidden surprises in, in his, right? And okay. this is, this is a painting we might walk past. And actually, I think yeah. we both did when we first looked at it. We're like, what the fuck? Moving on. Um, but you do a double take, and yeah. it's just so bizarre. It's like a lot of naked ladies. All right, I get it. Cool. <laughs> but yeah. it's like it's a delightful confusion. Like right. it, it's amusing. Like I, I'm in a space where it's good to be confused. I don't feel weird about it. If okay, that, if that makes sense. Like I'm not saying that Ivan's isn't a good painting. I'm going to say right. that, but I don't want to stare at it for too long. Mm. I'd rather take a shower. Yeah. So when you're rolling around, all the, so you don't actually you don't want to roll around on the dirty, grimy Chuck E. Cheese floor with me and the other dogs. All right, no. Wolf, wolf, us dirty dogs. Okay, no. Okay, no thanks. I I love Albright's painting. Uh, I love okay. uh, the way he paints. I love the way that he actively pushes you outside of the painting. He's uh-huh. like trying to keep you out of the yeah. painting on yeah. purpose. It's all intentional. Yeah. Um. But I do think like like Stanley's paintings have grown on me. Yeah. This entire time. Like yeah. it's just it's been it's been a sleeper. And every time I go <laughs> back to it, Ivan, you know, I don't want to say he doesn't feel intentional. I actually mm-hmm. think he does feel very intentional mm-hmm. with his work. He's yeah. very sincere. Yes. I do not question him like I often question surrealists, artists, because he doesn't have a manifesto. Right. He's not trying to be surreal. Right. right. He's not trying to stick to some like Freudian interpretation. Right. But it, I mean, it's fictional. Mm-hmm. It's magical realism, mm-hmm. and, and I, I buy into his world. Yeah, I totally buy into his Definitely. world. With Spencer, <laughs> with Spencer, <laughs> I don't know if any of this is fiction to him. Like, I think it's real. Like, there is yeah. a certainty to his work. Yeah, that, and it's not just this painting. Like, no. it, it, it was any painting that was not a commission. Patrice, so really, we like. <laughs> So, like, his two most famous works, the more, like, Diego Rivera-esque works, mm-hmm. I feel like those are not the best examples of his work. Like, his like his Last Supper painting, where they're all playing footsie. All, the, <laughs> like, Jesus and Judas and all the disciples yeah. are playing footsie yeah. in the middle of the table. And you're they just are. like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this guy on? <laughs> on life. Yeah. and, then, and then he, <laughs> He's painting St. Anthony in a see-through net dress. With a, with yeah. like no discernible skeletal system, Humpty like Dumpty in a box, man. That's and he's, what you, you get. know, he's, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, there's people who are octopuses. There's people getting eaten by birds. Like, this is what Dolly should have been in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dolly is-